Back in 1995, uh, the Mastodons of East Hants were formed. We were the River Country Mastodons. Uh, it was Tim Shive and uh, Terry Anthony had formed the team. But after the 1999 season, the, the team had folded. I played with Brookfield, actually, um, myself and Hopewell. We played there for years, and there was no Mastodon team because the younger guys on our team were playing junior and stuff. And it was the year, I believe it was 2010 year, that the Brookfield team kind of folded. And it was a following summer that we started a Macedon team. Um, wanted to bring the name back and stuff. And we had myself, Chris Hopewell, Aaron Harvey, a bunch of them. And that's when we started. We had a look at our team and what our needs were. And Schofield's a horse. Like, he's a big workhorse. He just throws. So we had him. We had Donnelly Archibald as a pitcher. And then we had Travis Nevin that was pitching. He was going down the States and playing. And then we had Cody Anthony and Alex Anthony is just for horses to keep us some innings. Um, so we kind of figured we didn't need a pitcher at the time. We were lucky enough to be able to pick up uh, the captain team Canada, Jeff Ellsworth. Um, I know that he wanted to play with us for a bit since we were a younger team playing in his tournaments. He always said that he wanted to be a part of it before we were done. So we're very lucky to have him as one of the best players in the world. And we're also lucky enough to be able to get Nick Shales. Nick Shales is a phenomenal ball player, phenomenal person. Our team is really a family environment and he fit right in there. He, j he just loves the game, loves being there, loves being around everybody and uh, he, he was a huge pickup for us. So those two guys uh, complemented everything else that we had going on in our team as far as our, our staff and those guys being around the ball field and playing at such high caliber for such a long time, everybody around them just picked up and you know maybe not played at that same level but certainly came to that same level. As far as the core goes, um, we had two other national team members that were with us before, and Justin Schofield and Jason Sanfer, who was a national team member. The rest of us were just the same group of guys from East Hants and surrounding area that have always played together. We were a core that was always together for that many years, and then we added some young guys along the way. That summer was different than summers of the past. Um, there was a feeling around the team I picked up on um, about mid-summer that that um, this, some, we were building something special with this group. Um, everybody was buying into what Chris and Mike wanted them to, to do. They, um, everybody just seemed to be on the same page, I guess you could say. Two weeks prior to heading to Nationals, we had some heavy, heavy practices, and I could just tell by the intensity in our practices, whether it be hitting, fielding ground balls, whatever, shagging, whatever it was, everybody was 100% all the time and it, it kind of just proved to me that we were ready going into this tournament. And sure enough, we get to the tournament and it remained the same. Everybody stayed glued together and we used the term pulling on the same rope the whole tournament. And we started pulling on that rope on day one and of that summer and we pulled that rope right to the very end until the last day of nationals. To take a group of 19 or 20 people, airfare, you know, hotels, rental vehicles to the other side of the country. Um, it's expensive, it, it's, everything's expensive these days, but to, to pull something like that off is, it's not possible without sponsors. We tried to do all the little things to, to raise the money, um, but ultimately the big reason why we got there and we were able to, to be prepared that year was, uh, was shooters, Beth and Brent, um, Timmy Eisner, Rod O'Leary, these are people that have been in our corner the whole way and we'll be forever grateful for them. You know, it's a small community and, and, and sometimes, you know, we lean heavily on our local businesses and, and things like that, but it's, it's key to, for a program like this to, to compete at the national level. We felt great going into that tournament because of the success we had in the past and what we've done and what we've accomplished at the national championship level before. Uh, obviously the team to beat was Newfoundland. They lost one game in the round robin since 2011 or 2012, I believe. Uh, they were always strong, they were always right there, they were the guys to beat. Day one of the tournament, you know, you play two games a day, and day one we came out 2-0. Uh, in years past we had done the same, you know, we, we had good starts. Uh, the thing that was different this time was we were putting up runs like crazy. We head into the last day of the round robin and we win both of our games again and we're smashing the ball. So we finished top four in the round robin. So you finish top four in the round robin means you go into double life. So we know we're going into championship Saturday. And then we go into the double life game again against the news. And 
we beat them. And I think that was when guys are like, oh shit, like we can actually do this, right? Like we beat the news. That was my first time beating the news. Um, they're defending chance for the last four years. And um, Skolf pitched a great game. And then we don't have to play that extra game. So lead into the finals, you know what I mean? You got a fresh horse, which is Skolf. Um, and then we just go and then we play. We walked into the field with a, with a swagger that day. Um, we knew after the last couple games against them that week that their backs were against the wall. It wasn't ours. They were the, the defending champions um, multiple years in a row. And, uh, and I think that they knew that they were going to have a dogfight that day. Um, you know, even to the point where we had home field advantage. They played the game just prior to the championship game. Um, and they were in the home team's dugout and we walked onto the field. We had the choice of dugouts and we made the move. We were the home team, we had earned it and uh, we were getting our dugout. And, and even, even that, I think they were shocked by, by the swagger that we had. One play, sorry, there's gonna be a couple plays I remember. There was a line drive hit to, a one hopper hit to our third baseman, Aaron Harvey. Aaron, he grew up a goaltender, so he had quick hands, quick feet. He made a diving play, and I still to this day don't know how he got the ball. Anyway, he ended up throwing the guy out at first. It, it held an inning from them scoring another run. I remember we were on first, and, and Jonah was up, and Jonah sack bunted. And when he laid down that sack bunt, he kind of pushed it, and I remember it was just going to be to move me over to second and get things going. And when he pushed that ball, the second baseman took off to first, and it jumped through that gap, and I was able to advance over to third. And that was huge for us because Jay Duffy was up next, hit a uh, hit a sack fly to left, and then that ended up that ended up scoring to be the win and run. We go up six four, so then you're like two innings left, like which. <laughs> you try to look at their lineup and see if you're at the bottom of their lineup, but it doesn't matter. Like it just, you just try to like go through every batter, right? Top of the seventh, Shane Bowen's up. Skull flees one there. He smashes one, which looks like it's getting in the gap between me and Shales. Nick Shales reaches out with a huge diving catch to preserve that first out. And that first out was huge because if he had a gut on, next batter ended up hitting a home run. I think back to the dive that Nick had just made. That's a two-run shot if he hadn't made that dive and made that play. Bradley hits a home run. We were up 6-5 with two outs. And then the, the play of the entire year was the last pitch ground out ball that was hit to Nick Shales. And if you look in the video, I'm dead set ready for that ball to come. He hits a ground ball just past me. My head just flies back because I know it's past me. It's going to Nick Shales. I know when that ball is going to Nick Shales, that's game over and it's just, you finally did it. And everybody just sprinted over towards the middle of the diamond, and everybody just went crazy. I was ecstatic running, and you don't know who to run to. Like, I was looking over, running to like, LZ, and he was running at a duff, and someone missed each other. I remember the circle, and I was almost in a daze because we were dogpiling, of course, and I'm walking around trying to think of, Shit, do I jump on top of this pile? What do I do? So the one thing that, you know, I'm very super proud of, aside from the fact that, you know, coaching a team and we won a national title, is the fact that my son, Jacob, is on this team. And when I came back to coach in, in 2012, my main objective was for those young guys to have somewhere to play, like my son. And when we won that national title and I had my son there, it just brought, brought back a lot of memories of when he was a little timbit up to the fact that he's playing at a national level right now and winning the gold medal with him was by far my favorite moment ever. Absolutely ever. There's a picture of us after the game all on one knee huddled around and uh, some of the, the key guys on the team spoke in that huddle. Chris, Joel, Scof, J. Duff. The one that stands out to me is Jason Sanford. Now this is a guy who has won everything. He has more rings than fingers. World Championships, Pan Am Games, you name it, he's won it. Up to that point, the Canadian Nationals was the, was the one that was missing for him with, uh, 
with Nova Scotia. And he told the story of how at his first Team Canada camp, they went around the room and they asked the players why they play the game and what's the most important thing to them. And he said, I want to win a national championship with the Nova Scotia team. Jason got very emotional during that. And it really drove home how important that is. The thing that comes back to me with that tournament, like my parents been to everything to me and my dad was there. And um, for me personally, 38 years old, um, I left my parents' house when I was 16 to go play hockey and play ball and my parents, they're not wealthy, right? Dad worked, mom stayed home, took care of three kids and for him to be there to see it, it was, that was the best for, for me. Twenty Twenty East Hans Sport Hall of Fame inductee, the East Hans Mastodons. 